So we made it back finally to Santiago in one piece. This is the van and we are so hot. So the first thing we realized is that the heat shield underneath the engine, which pretty much separates you from the heat of the engine because we're sitting on top of the engine in these vans, is stuffed. And it was like sitting on an oven for four hours and we are so hot, I think. Yeah, I might have to get myself checked out downstairs to make sure all the swimmers are still good. So, this is the new van that we're going to be traveling around the whole of South America with. It's a 2003 Toyota Hiace diesel 3 litre, non-turbo. Um, so I'll give you a tour around before I start ripping into it and converting it. So we've got the original um, bench seat, I'm not sure what exactly is in here. So this is all going to get ripped out. Uh, the high roof, it's all kind of like old, like fiberboard, um, some speakers in the roof. We've got some switches, these might come in useful. Anything electrical I'll probably try and reuse. Um, I think this is for the ambulance box. I'm not sure exactly what any of these switches do, but there's some 12 volt outlets. A fuse box, which is definitely going to come in handy because I've been trying to find one and they're just nearly impossible to find. Uh, it's got already this little cabin up here, but I think I'm going to pull that out. Really utilize the space in here. Uh, it's got this little sliding window, which I think I'm actually going to pull out and drill a hole through the side door so we get some more natural light coming in through the cabin because there's only this one window and it's very tinted. So I don't think it's going to do the job. The reason why it's in such good condition still is I think it's because it was an ambulance and it was looked after. Because a lot of vehicles here in Chile are just really neglected. The price of labour for mechanics is really cheap, parts are cheap. So they make cars run longer and longer and they don't really buy new cars. But a lot of people don't have the money to fix cars so they kind of just let, neglect them and let them run. Pretty much just limp around. Um, but this one was a bit of a, a different story. It was really nice, in really nice condition. Um, that's why we purchased it. So that was fun. Um, I was just grinding off the glue that was stuck down to the floor with the angle grinder and then the angle grinder just caught on fire and there were just flames coming out the side. Pretty sure they're not meant to do that. So now we're gonna have to go buy a new angle grinder. Okay, so now that we've stripped everything out of the van, we've cleaned it all up, we're left with just a shell and the bare minimum. The next thing I like to do is take a few measurements and convert the van into a 3D model so I can visualize it better on the computer. For this, I use a program called SketchUp. It's free software. It's quite easy to use if you've got a little bit of know-how. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how to actually use the software because there's a lot of tutorials already on YouTube. So I'm just gonna show you how I do it, how I import uh, the van into the model, um, and then you can visualize exactly how much space you have, what's gonna fit, how your design and your whole layout will actually fit together. So it's really good to actually get a 3D model of your design before you start cutting and building everything so you know it's gonna fit. So the first thing I like to do is to create a floor plan of the van. And that's done quite simply by using a tape measure and measuring the width of the van at various points and then just connecting the dots. You can then add your wheel arches, tires for effect, and then you start to design the shell of the van. Done quite simply, there's a lot of YouTube tutorials about how to do this. You can then put your back door, front scoop, and roof. And then you have a pretty much shell of the van. You can start adding more details like windows and vents if your van already has some. But this is pretty much the empty virtual shell of my van, which I can start designing the bed, the kitchen, the seats, and how everything is going to fit. So now you've got the shell of your van, you have to start designing. And you really just gotta to start to think what you actually wanna have inside your van. We were fortunate enough that we've already built one, so we know kind of what we want and what we don't want. So what we really wanted was some kind of fixed bed or a bed that has less setup time than the one we had in our previous van. So our last van had a bed and table set up, which you had to make every day um, if you wanted to set the table up and then use the bed afterwards. Me personally, I hated the job. I didn't like sitting up the bed every day. It's personal preference. I wanted something that was more fixed. The problem is, 
This current van is only 3 meters long by 1.6 meters wide. If I put a fixed bed in there, it's really just going to take up all my space and I'm not going to have any room for anything else. We wanted a place that we had permanent seats and some kind of table that will be between the seats and we wanted a decent sized kitchen that we could use the cooker in and outside the van. This is kind of sized as a medium sized van. I mean, you got your sprinters and your dailies and your crafters, which are kind of like your large cargo vans. And you've got smaller vans than this. So this is like in the middle. So you don't really have everything that you can get in a sprinter van. You can't really put beds widthways and fit like a, a large dining table, fixed bed, kitchen in. So you got to kind of try and make some sacrifices. So I've come up with a couple of ideas that I think will work. Um, I've modeled them in the software and I'm pretty sure that they're going to be able to get me what I want in terms of a fixed bed, a sliding out dining table and a full kitchen all in this small van. Okay, so here's my general idea of the van. If I remove some of the exterior walls, we'll get a better view of the inside. Here's the general layout of the van. We've got a sliding slat bed, so it's not fixed, but it's gonna be a lot easier to set up than a standard table lounge setup. We've got two bench seats and a slide out table that slides under the bed with drawer slides. The bed will slide out through these slats and look like this when it is all extended. And this will be 1.9 meters from here to here. So it'll allow us to have a full kitchen and seating arrangements, but we just can't have the seating and the bed set up at the same time, which I'm happy with. I'll go over the kitchen in more details in another video, but here is the general layout where we'll have a fridge that will pull out, a couple of drawers and a slide out table so we can work outside and cook. So welcome to day two of our van build. We pretty much have just stripped everything out of the old ambulance. It was disgustingly filthy. It had 200,000 kilometers of dirt in every crevice. We hosed the van down, it came out black. It was pretty gross, so we didn't want to live in that. Took all the insulation off, all the old uh, paneling and everything. So it's basically just an absolute skeleton at the moment. We also found out that there is 20 centimeters thick layer of mud just behind the walls that couldn't get out after we hosed it down. So we had to drill holes from the bottom of the van to get all water and mud out. It yeah. was so gross. So at the moment, I'm just making the template for the floor. Um, the best way I've found to do that in the past is to yeah, pretty much cut templates out of cardboard and then stick them together into your sizes of your plywood and then it makes cutting so much easier. You'll get your cuts right the first time, there won't be gaps um, and it's really cheap and easy. You can do it quite quickly. So Vendy is cleaning the floor, prepping it, ready for the uh, plywood flooring to go down. The old floor was actually glued down on the stand, which was a real pain in the ass. So we had to scrape a lot of the glue away and a lot of the wood was actually stuck. So we originally tried to grind the wood off with a sanding disc, um, which ended up blowing up the angle grinder that caught on fire. So we stopped that. <laughs> and then we ended up just scraping it off with a chisel. But we left some bare metal. So we're just gonna paint over that with a couple bit of rust protection paint. And um, yeah, then we're ready to lay the floor. So good morning. This is day three of the van. Uh, we were pretty productive yesterday, we got a lot of stuff done, we got the new floor in, uh, we ripped it all out, we cut it all the sides, screwed it all down, and we started on the insulation. So we've got 60mm uh, polyester insulation, only half done at the moment. The van was originally a low roof high ace, so this was the original level of the van. Um, the original roof still is here so we're going to cut that out make a nice flat plywood roof for our cabin this is just wobbly and crap after ripping out the fiberglass divider we started cutting out the old roof with the jigsaw we then had the meticulous task of trying to replace the metal we cut out with plywood and fix it to the cabin we then replaced the fiberglass divider with a plywood version that we screwed into the side of the van Alright guys, that's it for this video. I hope you like it. Leave a comment down below what you think of the design, if you think it's going to work or if you think it's going to fail. I'd love to hear what you think. And we'll see you on the next one.